After this breather, we'll be back with a story on breathing as Rek Nietland talks about asthma. I want to live the best life. Hello, doctor. According to Google, in the last month there were 165,000 searches on their South African site for the word pregnancy. The second most searched word. The first, with a staggering 823,000 searches, was asthma. That should take your breath away, as it does for every one out of six Olympic athletes. Having made literal waves in the world of swimming, most people would agree that Rake Nietling has swum his way into South Africa's heart and become one of our favorite sporting icons. Though he takes to water like a fish, many people don't know that he's had a lifelong struggle with asthma. It's hard to believe when you consider that he's broken records, won numerous medals at international events and brought home that gold medal from the 2004 Olympic Games. Rake's dedication and perseverance extend beyond the pool into the business of property and wine and now runs his Learn to Swim schools for children. All of this hard work without ever losing his breath. So he's an Olympic gold medalist, a former world record holder, the first South African to compete in four successive Olympic Games and the man has asthma. Rake, thank you for joining us on Hello Doctor. Thank you. When, when did you first realize you had asthma? I was playing rugby as a young boy in Bloemfontein and um, about a half time I was finished. You know, my tongue was hanging out and, and uh, you know, my mom took me to the doctor and one day she said, Reiki, you asthma? And I don't know what that meant. And, um, <laughs> Reiki. Yeah, Reiki, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've been dealing with it ever since. So we don't have too many Reiki netlings in our country, but we've got a lot of asthma sufferers. What's the incidence in South Africa, Shauna? About 10% of South Africans have asthma. As much as that? Yeah. Okay. And can asthma, asthma can be controlled, not cured, not so? That's correct. Okay. That's the important thing to understand. It's, it's not a condition that we can cure, but through careful management and persistent management, um, patients can live a completely normal life with asthma. So I want to talk to Rake about that, Rake, because how does asthma affect your performance? I mean, as a distance swimmer, that must have been debilitating. I think in the beginning it was, but luckily my family didn't make a big deal out of it. I just learned how to, you know, how to control it, you know, with the medication that I was using. And, you know, it was my profession to be a professional swimmer. But you've got asthma. I mean, how do you control asthma? Surely when you're swimming, you're coughing, you're wheezing. That can't be good for performance. That's not a world record-breaking performance, should it? Um, no, it's not. But... Yeah, like the doctor said, with the medication that you have, you can control it. I must say that um, you know, since I was sponsored by Cipla, I took the medication, um, and I will never forget this. I was riding my bike to practice, and it felt like I could breathe for the first time in my life. So my performance also improved, um, especially in training, because I was swimming five, six hours a day, you know, training really hard. Your heart rate is up 150 to 180 for five hours, and I could, I could. I could definitely feel the difference, so that really helped me. And, and uh, you know, just staying away from certain things, um, you know, from certain foods before you know, I would train. If we went to places like Beijing, where the pollution was bad, just to, just to be extra careful. So, Rick, you're talking about triggers there, Sean. Let's talk about that, because we know that asthma is a narrowing of the airways uh, caused by an inflammation, but that's often triggered by various things, such as... Uh, triggers include things that you breathe in, for instance, pollution or cigarette smoke. I mean, there are also allergens that uh, cause problems with asthmatics. Um, examples would be things like pollen, um, house dust mite, animal dander like cats and dogs. Um, so those are the types of things okay. that will trigger an asthma attack. Well, let's talk about treatment then. There, as you said, there's ways of controlling it. There's an immediate control and there's long-term control. I know yes. Rake's bad at long-term control, aren't you, Rake? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we talked about that earlier. Why are you bad at long-term control? Yeah, you know, I'm on the move all the time, and uh, you know, sometimes I forget to take my medication. But uh, being a professional athlete, I mean, my uh, it's my livelihood, and yeah. uh, my Keep health depends on it. So, so uh, you know, when I was in the States, I mean, I just learned that this is something. Without this, I will not be able to achieve my dreams. So. Yeah. Asthma can be controlled but it cannot be cured. And uh, that's an important thing to understand because if a patient is going to um, manage their life effectively, they need to control their asthma every day. Okay, how do you control your asthma, right? Well, I know that I'm allergic to certain things, so I try to stay away from cats. <laughs> but, Me too, uh, <laughs> cats, ah, oh, I hate cats. Um, I lived in Arizona for, you know, for 12 years, 
So there were certain times of the year when it would get really bad. Um, you know, if there was dust in the air, when we went to Beijing for the Olympic Games, I mean, you could hardly see the buildings, you know, like a kilometer away. So it was a challenge there. So um, you're just more aware of it. Uh, obviously, you know, it was my profession to be a professional swimmer. So I had to look after my body. Um, and it becomes a way of life, really. Most asthma sufferers feel fine, and that's why they don't take their medication regularly. Well, the thing is, asthma medication is divided into two main groups. They're the controller medications and the reliever medi medications. And patients with asthma need to take the controller medications every single day, even when they're well. Whereas the reliever medication is used when they're having an asthma attack or feeling a bit tight. Okay. What do you use, Rick? Combination, surely, that makes it easier. I, I do use a combination of Seraflow. Makes it easy for me. It's just, you know, it's just one asthma pump that I can uh, you know, throw in my bag. It's always with me when I go train. So, um, yeah, instead of using a couple of different ones, I just have one. Brilliant. And asthma is serious, isn't it? I mean, you can die from asthma. Asthma is a serious condition. Not every asthmatic has a serious attack on a regular basis. Some asthmatics are very mild, but it's very important to realize that any asthmatic can have a serious attack. Um, in, in South Africa, we have the fourth um, highest mortality rate in the world, um, and about 18 out of every 100,000 asthma sufferers dies of asthma in this country, and most of those deaths are preventable. preventable. Have you ever had an attack, Rick? I don't think I've had a serious attack, but I've had times where I had to get out of practice or just stop for a couple of minutes. So, um, so I guess it would be like a mild attack. But my little sister, um, well, I say little, she turns 21 soon, but uh, <laughs> she'll always be my little sister. But yeah. she, she has some serious attacks, and, and uh, so I guess it's, you know, it's in the family. Yeah. And you've lost a friend to asthma too, haven't you? Yes, I have, you know, a long time ago, probably just after I was diagnosed. You know, the seriousness, um, can't be overstated. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, Ray. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you. Any messages you have for our asthma sufferers? I think the important thing for asthma sufferers to remember is to take the medication even when they're well, um, so that they remain controlled. Yeah. And Ray? Just because you have asthma doesn't mean that you can't be active and go chase your dreams. So, um, yeah, so go for it. It's not a disability. Well, you heard it from Rake Nittling yourself, Olympic gold medalist. And if you have exercise-induced asthma, that's no reason not to exercise or perform or train. Take a look at some of these tips at how you can prevent exercise-induced asthma. Always use your pre-exercise asthma inhalers before beginning exercise. Perform warm-up exercises. If the weather is cold, exercise indoors or wear a mask or scarf over your nose and mouth. If you have allergic asthma, avoid exercising outdoors when pollen counts are high or when there is high air pollution. Restrict exercise when you have a viral infection like a cold and exercise at a level that is always appropriate for you. Sibla will make it better. Hello, doctor. So we've just heard that South Africa has the fourth highest mortality rate when it comes to asthma in the world. So what do you say we try and reduce that number by teaching you what to do in the case of an acute asthma attack? That's why I've asked Andre from ER24 to join us in studio. Andre, help us out here. First aid for asthma. Well, once we've established that the person that you are approaching uh, is currently having an asthma attack, it's very important the way you approach that person. And uh, due to one of the triggers being, or asthma triggers being anxiety, we we need to remain calm when addressing the person and getting information from them. Okay, so you don't want, don't panic, don't panic, I'm okay! You know, no, that definitely sort of thing. not. Right, uh, when it comes to the area that the person is in, um, obviously the asthma gets triggered by certain things, so you want to remove that person from that area. And uh, then you want to go with the further steps uh, to... Uh, establish the severity of the asthma and um, the way we do that is uh, asking the person if they do suffer from asthma. The reason we do that is to, to entice them to tell us which medications they're on which is also one of the things that you're going to ask them and um, then you start activating your emergency services which of course uh, nationally is the 112 number and then also ER24 at 084124. Uh, after that, you want to get certain information to relay to the emergency services you're phoning. Uh, the first step, of course, when phoning those emergency services is to be very specific of the situation that's going on so that the call taker can establish the severity of that 
the asthma attack situation that, of what's yep. going on. With asthma being a respiratory-related illness, is there's always a chance of the person losing consci consciousness. And once the person has lost consciousness, there's no information that you can sure. get from that person. Asthma related, you, you want to ask the allergies the person uh, is suffering from. Very important, the medication they're on or not. If they are a, a known asthmatic, they will probably have an, yep. a form of medication that they use. And then their past medical history as well. So, Andre, are you busy describing the acronym AMPLE for taking history? Yes. Uh, the last two, the L and the E, is basically the last meal that that person has had prior to the events playing off. And the E stands for the events that led up to that person. And you basically can decipher those events, possibly putting that person in that position, suffering from that medical condition. Great. Andre, thank you so much. And that information is going to give your first responder, your paramedic, everything he needs to know to treat this particular condition. Of course, the question is, how do I know when someone's about to have an acute asthma attack? Well, these are the signs you need to look out for. Wheezing when breathing both in and out, coughing that won't stop, rapid breathing, chest pain, tightened neck and chest muscles, difficulty in taking a breath and talking, and feelings of anxiety or panic.